everyone, I'm Nazarat Fatima. Welcome to Life Law. We have compiled the arguments made by petitioners during the hearing in the matter pertaining to Article 370. The Constitution Bench of the Supreme Court, led by Chief Justice of India, D. Y. Chandrachur, and comprising of Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul, Sanjeev Khanna, B. R. Gawai, and Surya Khan presided over these hearings. An argument was made by the petitioners that JNK retained constitutional autonomy as it did not sign a merger agreement. The petitioners stressed upon the unique nature of JNK's relationship with India, which got embodied in the Indian constitutional setup. In this context, the petitioners provided the bench with a history of JNK's accession with India and the subsequent formation of the constitution of JNK. It was followed by the argument that the constitutions of India and JNK are intertwined and Article 370 was a bridge. Senior advocate Gopal Subramanyam in his arguments asserted that the two frameworks of the constitution of India and the constitution of JNK were not isolated entities but rather intertwined in a complementary manner. He emphasized that their coexistence formed the very essence of the dynamic relationship between India and JNK. In this context, he added that there existed not just one but two constituent assemblies, one of India and another of JNK, and Article 370 acted as a bridge between the state of JNK and India, and removing it would mean removing that passage. Another argument that was made was that Article 370 was no longer a temporary provision. With regard to this argument, the petitioners said that Article 370 had assumed permanence and was no longer a temporary provision post the dissolution of the JNK Constituent Assembly in 1957. With regard to this argument, senior advocate Mr. Kapil Sibal argued that Article 370 was called a temporary provision only because when the Constitution of India came into force, the Constituent Assembly of JNK did not exist. He argued that the constitution makers foresaw the formation of the constituent assembly of JNK and it was understood that this assembly would have the authority to determine the future course of article 370. Once the constituent assembly came into being, created the constitution for the state and then ceased to exist after its tenure from 1951 to 1957 without recommending the removal of article 370, the article became a permanent feature of the constitution. Another argument that was made by senior advocate Zafar Shah, he said that permanent residence must be protected. He stated that the history of the region solidified the idea of protecting individuals who lived in the state of Jammu and Kashmir as permanent residents. Senior advocate Mr. Dinesh Dwedi made an argument that Article 370 ceased to operate once JNK constitution was enacted. Mr. Dwedi, taking a different route while interpreting Article 370, stated that Article 370 ceased to operate entirely once the constitution of JNK was enacted in 1957, and accordingly, all the powers conferred under Article 370 to abrogate it also ceased to operate when the JNK constitution was made. Referring to Article 370 as an interim arrangement, he said that the final decision with regard to the jurisdiction of the Union and the Indian Parliament over Kashmir as well as the centre and state relations was always meant to be taken by the Constituent Assembly. Later, the arguments mainly had their base on the procedure adopted by the Union. The petitioners argued that the Indian Parliament cannot convert itself into the Constituent Assembly. It was followed by the contention that the concurrence of state of JNK was necessary, which according to the petitioners was not done. Moreover, with regard to the extent of usage of Article 356, it was argued that the misuse of the article is impermissible. It was emphasized by the council that the purpose of Article 356 was to restore state machinery and not destroy it. But the president's rule in JNK was imposed to destroy the state legislature. It was adopted that president's rule under Article 356 was in its nature temporary and thus permanent actions could not be taken under it. It was also argued that under Article 356, union could only exercise the functions of the state government and not the powers. Another argument which followed was that the amendment through Article 367 is impermissible. The petitioners argued that Article 370 could not have been amended directly without the recommendation of the Constituent Assembly of JNK and that the 2019 orders had amended Article 367, which is a provision related to interpretation clauses within the Constitution, to interpret the words Constituent Assembly under Article 370 as Legislative Assembly of JNK 
and the term government of JNK as governor of JNK. Meanwhile, with regard to the provision which could possibly deal with the abrogation, it was said that Article 370 could only be amended through Article 368. A good portion of arguments was also made in relation to the Indian constitutional ethos. It was argued that India followed asymmetrical federalism and a dual polity system. It was asserted that the Indian constitution took note of special conditions and special needs of people and this was a core feature of the Indian federal structure and could not be removed. In this context, it was argued that autonomy of states within the federation was fundamental to the constitution and that special provisions made in relation to people of different states were a regular feature of the constitution. Moving on to the argument that the conversion of state into union territory is impermissible. It was argued that while Article 3 of the Indian Constitution granted the power to union to alter the boundaries of states and even create smaller states through bifurcation, it had never before been used to convert an entire state into a union territory. The argument was first raised by senior advocate Mr. Kapil Sibal and was later elaborated upon by senior advocate Chandraudai Singh. Coming to the arguments regarding the inclusion of political agenda, it was argued that there was abuse of power by union. Elaborating upon the backdrop of the abrogation of Article 370, senior advocate Mr. Dushan Dave asserted that the ruling party had exercised its constitutional powers to achieve political ends and the same could not be done. Secondly, it was argued that the 2019 BJP election manifesto was illegal. During the arguments, Mr. Dave also took the bench through the 2019 BJP election manifesto, which provided that if the voters voted for BJP, it would abrogate Article 370. In this context, Mr. Dave asserted that election manifestos could not be contrary to the constitutional scheme, and in 2015, even the Election Commission had issued guidelines to ensure that the manifestos must be as per constitutional scheme. Another argument that was made in the court was that the integration was not a measure of centre's control. Senior advocate Nitya Ramakrishnan in her arguments challenged the assumption that Article 370 was temporary and served as a means of greater integration. She urged the court for reconsidering this conventional narrative and contended that the notion that Article 370 was established as a stepping stone to eventual integration was fundamentally flawed. She argued that integration was not merely a measure of central control, but rather a complex process that extended beyond administrative governance. These were some of the major highlights of the arguments made during the hearing in the matter. We have published an article that elaborates these arguments and to read these in detail, please visit the link given below in the description box. That's all for the video for now. We hope you like our content. If you do, please like and share our videos. Also subscribe to our channel on YouTube and don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications. Thank you for watching.